and it sent Superior Spider-Man. Superior Spider-Man is actually Otto Octavius, who prior to the Superior Spider-Man storyline had brain swapped with Peter, yet a piece of Peter still remained in his own body and didn't die in Otto's body, which ended up convincing Otto to be a hero, albeit a darker one. This small bit of Peter that was left in his body was also trying to regain control, for obvious reasons because you know a superhero was piloting his bone mech. This small bit of Peter though was at times able to interfere or even control Otto temporarily. One of these moments came in Superior Spider-Man number 8, where there was a device that was capable of wiping Peter from Otto's brain, but to get the actual item, Otto had to perform surgery on a little girl. However, Peter didn't think that Otto was actually able to do it, so he tries to stop Otto from even performing the surgery, but he also didn't want him to get the thing that would wipe him from his brain. Also, Otto did this surgery while having his Spider-Man mask on and an additional face mask. But either way, this version of Spider-Man was definitely more ruthless and willing to kill since he was still technically a supervillain. And a nine Kane. The clone that would come to be known as Kane was the Jackal's first attempt at clone cloning Peter Parker. Initially thought to be a success, Kane eventually became deformed to do a flaw in the cloning process, and he continued to degenerate, and he was left further deformed and mentally unstable. <laughs> Aren't we all? The Jackal allowed Kane to live as like a test subject to see how long he would be able to survive, and it ended up exceeding Jackal's expectations. As a result though, Kane experienced a strong feeling of rejection that might be kind of like a father-son kind of thing, you know that, you know what I mean. Kane left and realized that the degenerate generation that had caused his mental state to decline had also amplified his powers that he had genetically kind of inherited from Peter. His strength, speed, stamina, and agility were also comparable to those of Peter, but he also gained precognitive powers as well, which showed him flashes of the future, which seemed to be sort of an amplified spider sense. He also possessed a mark of Kane, which was a corrosive touch that he used to leave eaten away handprints on victims' faces, which is pretty damn scary if you ask me. Also, if you're enjoying this video and want to see more, be sure you hit that like button and subscribe because it really helps us out against the algorithm almighty. Also, I'm dressed as Spider-Man and talking about Spider-Man, so I feel like that's worth a like. And it ate Pestilence Spider-Man. When Apocalypse started his plans for world domination, he captured four people who we saw as being good enough to be his horsemen and corrupted them. Spider-Man became the horseman known as Pestilence. Pestilence was one of the horsemen that Deadpool, Cannonball, and Siren encountered in their alternate reality search for Cable. And even though Pestilence was accompanied in the fight by Famine and Archangel, all three of them were defeated. This version of Peter Parker has the same powers as his 616 counterpart, except this time they've been augmented by Apocalypse when he corrupted them. But I mean, like a Spider-Man who is literally a horseman of the Apocalypse and asks people if they will scream while he sucks the marrow from their bones, I think it's safe to say that this guy is pretty damn scary. And he made his first appearance in 2005, which makes this character around the same age that Peter was when he got his powers, which is kind of ironic. He hails from Earth 5701, which is the age of Apocalypse Earth. And it's Seven Ghost Spider. Ghost Spider comes from Earth 11638 and in this reality Peter Parker's Uncle Ben never died and actually ended up helping Peter to train as a hero with his new spider powers, becoming the Amazing Spider. A famous and popular superhero who also became a rich and successful scientist having his own company called Parker Technologies. With his resources and motivation from Uncle Ben, the Amazing Spider used transportation technology to bring Spider-Men from other universes to his and absorb their power to increase his. After bringing the Spider-Man from Earth 616 to his Earth though and making him believe that he arrived in this universe by accident, the Amazing Spider was weakened by the feedback of the dimensional portal. Eventually, the Amazing Spider was convinced that what he was doing was not in fact heroic and allowed himself to die. But after dying, the Sorcerer Supreme of Dr. Banner yeah, infused Peter's spirit that was trapped in hell with the powers of the damned, causing him to become a form of Ghost Rider, calling himself the Ghost Spider. And honestly, this is one of the baddest spider suits of all time. I love it. If I could figure out a way to cosplay this, I would. And it's six, zombie Spider-Man. Okay, so technically this is Spider-Man, but it's a zombie version of Spider-Man, but I'm gonna count it anyway, because this is pretty damn messed up, zombie or not. On Earth 2149, an alien plague ends up infecting all super-powered individuals and turns them into zombies. However, it's later revealed that the Necronomicon from the Evil Dead was actually what caused this plague. But after learning that the plague was really bad, since I guess the fact that they were calling it a plague wasn't enough, or the fact that the world had to shut down so the population wasn't wiped out, Peter ran home to get Aunt May and Mary Jane the hell out of Dodge. But when he got there, we got a good old case of Parker Luck, protagonist syndrome. Boom, zombie spider. He ends up becoming a zombie as soon as he gets home and eats the two most important women in his life. He also fractured his jaw before becoming a zombie so he could 
open his mouth more, I guess. Or kind of like, kind of like man spider it. Yeah, it's not a pretty sight. Like even by zombie standards, it's ew, whoo. Halfway through in at number five, man spider. Man spider is the mutated form of Spider-Man which appeared in both the comics and the 1990s animated series. With his original appearance actually coming from the animated series. In the 90s cartoon, Spider-Man's transformation into the man spider was not caused deliberately like it was in the comics, but as a result of his body mutating further from the original spider bite that gave him his powers. After his attempts to ask Professor X and the X-Men for help developing a cure meet with failure, Spider-Man turned to his friend Dr. Mariah Crawford for aid. Unfortunately, his initial attempt to cure himself resulted in him accelerating the actual mutation process and growing four new arms. The accelerated mutation subsequently caused him to mutate into the man spider after fighting the Punisher and a recently mutated Michael Morbius. The mutated Spider-Man retained some of his memories and his emotional responses to seeing loved ones or people who reminded him of his loved ones but could not communicate with them. Eventually, during the final episode of the storyline called Neurogenic Nightmare, Dr. Connors reprogrammed devices that Vulture was using to absorb youth from other people and caused him to give Peter back his spider powers but not the mutation, resulting in the Vulture mutating into Man Spider, although somehow he had gotten rid of this mutation off screen later in the series. It's also worth noting that the introduction of Man Spider in the comics, which was thanks to this animated series, is actually what introduced the biological web shooters from Sam Raimi's Spider-Man into the comics as well. And for Spider Carnage. Spider Carnage is my favorite alternate version of Spider-Man. Also being introduced in the Spider-Man animated series in the 1990s like the Man Spider from Last Number, this version of Peter Parker shared most of his early life with his superhero counterpart. However, the difference between these two was that Aunt May at some point died as well, being buried next to Uncle Ben. Thanks to some messing around with interdimensional portals by Jonathan Ohm, a version of a Carnage symbiote from another universe sensed this Peter's anger and latched onto him, turning him into the Spider Carnage, a version of Spider-Man with the Carnage symbiote, if you couldn't tell. A villain set on revenge and the destruction of all realities. Spider-Carnage is one of the coolest iterations of Spider-Man to date, in my opinion, and it's part of the reason I love the 90s cartoon so much. I watch it all the way through just so I can see Spider-Carnage at the end. And while there is a version from the comics just called the Spider, which is Spider-Man with the Carnage symbiote, this version wanted to destroy literally everything, so um, yes please, this is certainly the scarier of the two, just saying. Sorry comic lovers. Hey, look, I like the comics too, but Spider Carnage is definitely worse than the spider. Getting close to the end at number 3, Patient Zero Spider-Man. After the Punisher accidentally released Survivor 118, a chemical designed to help people adapt to a post-apocalyptic environment, Spider-Man was the first to show symptoms from it after he ate the rhino during a hockey game. The Fantastic Four subdued him shortly afterwards and put him in a cage for experimentation, but Ben Grimm also succumbed to the plague himself and freed Spider-Man from captivity, though the exact reason why he did that is unknown. As he escapes into the city, he briefly fought Wolverine and the Punisher, but soon the world would start to fall apart and heroes and villains alike would become cannibals, eventually leaving the Punisher as the only hero left to fight them. A turf war erupted among the emerging tribes of cannibals, due in part to the King of Death's manipulations in an attempt to thin the herd, but Spider-Man, now referred to as Patient Zero, was the most successful and took control of all of Manhattan for his own tribe while the others left to stake new lands. They had to go and they had to conquer other places. Especially given the recent world issues though, I think that this is certainly something that I can say a good majority of people are afraid of. Although I bet that there are some survivors on this earth that say Survivor 118, that the Survivor 118 plague is fake calling it. But ultimately, in at number two, Wolf Spider. At an unknown time in this universe, Wolf Spider gained spider-like powers, but unlike most other realities Peter Parker, he became a villain, remorselessly killing this universe's Miles Morales and everyone who stood for heroism and responsibility. Because, you know, that's what, that's, the, we're bad guys, it's what we do. First appearing in the Ultimate Spider-Man cartoon in season four, episode 16, this guy isn't even the villain of just one world. After finding a shard of the Siege Perilous, he traveled through dimensions to find the rest. One of these dimensions was Blood Spider. Spider's homeworld, where he allied himself with the Lizard King. After turning almost everyone into vampires, with, which is weird because, I mean, it was called the Lizard King, well, would you, wouldn't you want to turn them into lizards, but whatever. He and the Lizard King hatched a plan to block out the sun so that vampires could just roam free on the earth. And this sounds very Dongard Volkahar clan to me. 
Okay, Peter, like, what are you gonna, what, you gonna tell me that you need to find Oriel's bow next? And, like, a daughter of Cold Harbor? I don't know. Skyrim. Wolf Spider, though, was cold and ruthless and obsessed with gathering the shards of Siege Perilous, and seemed to have a grudge against Spider-Man and every Miles Morales. An evil Peter Parker is always a scary thing. And finally, in at number one, Spider's Man. Peter Parker of Earth 11580 was once a promising young student. Invited by Max Modal alongside his best friend Gwen Stacy to tour his bleeding edge company at Verizon Labs. One of the experiments the pair observed was a massive colony of spiders that Modell was bombarding with numerous radioactive particles in the name of genetic alteration. Parker, of course, fell into this colony where he seemed to be devoured. But in the process, the spiders became a singular hive mind construct that absorbed Peter's consciousness. So they started masquerading as the man they absorbed. The hive, calling themselves Spider's Man, put on the Spider-Man costume and began to fight crime in cruel York. First appearing in spider in number three, I absolutely hate the idea of a whole human being made of spiders because that's just f***ed up. Look, I'm arachnophobic except for the odd time where I need to impress someone, but it's absolutely horrific to think of any being made entirely of spiders, okay? I would actually rather die. Even if this is a good guy, no f***ing way am I looking at this man and saying, oh yeah, let's let him help us. No, he can go burn with the rest of the spider species as they f***ing should, okay? Kicking off the list at number 10, Ghost Spider. Coming from Earth 11638, aka the perfect world, okay. This Peter Parker has a much brighter beginning, meaning Uncle Ben never actually passed away and gave the whole great responsibility speech. Instead, he encourages Peter to become a stronger Spider Man, which sounds good on paper. It sounds like the ideal world. But does he recommend protein shakes and proper exercise and nutrition? No. See, Uncle Ben pushes Peter to abduct Spider Man from other worlds and then absorb their life force via this portal that. Parker Technologies created. So he's a bit of a dick, this Uncle Ben. He's not really the nicest guy. Maybe he's fine. I don't know. This whole system seems a little bit whack. Now eventually Earth 616 Spider-Man shows up. They both hear about each other. It's interesting because Uncle Ben poisons our Peter and then he wakes up confused and they fight it out and our Peter Parker comes out on top luckily with the perfect amazing spider getting his soul sucked into that machine. Now the perfect Spider-Man spirit was then trapped in the underworld like hell and then from here it only gets more strange. Well well, rather it gets more Banner. See, Banner was the current Sorcerer Supreme at this time, so he ended up freeing Peter in his astral form, but then Peter absorbed all those spirits of the damned while he was down there, so when he came back up, this perfect spider was now Ghost Spider. Number nine, Old Man Spider. Ezekiel Sims from Earth 4, AKA Old Man Spider, took over the web-slinging spot after Peter Parker lost his life to Moreland. Now, Ezekiel first appeared in Edge of Spider-Verse issue five. He was actually recruited by Spider UK, who I'll talk about a little bit later, to go against Moreland and the Inheritors. Now, Ezekiel rescued Ben Riley and Kane from the Inheritors, which is awesome, and then a bunch of other spider beings were then recruited, but Deimos tracked them down and snapped this Spider-Man's neck. He caught him off guard. Brutal. And in his last words, he revealed his true self and told Peter to protect Silk, aka the bride. All that matters. What a beautiful last sentence. We love impactful last words here at Top 10 Nerd. It's the best. And you know what else we like? We like when you like our videos. Literally, go and give this video a thumbs up and it will do wonders for our channel. We're trying our best, so, you know, all we ask is for a little click. Maybe subscribe, maybe like, maybe notifications if you're feeling good. I don't know. Let's get back to the list. Number eight. Spider UK. Here he is, Billy Braddock himself. I told you I'd talk about him. He began his life as Captain Britain, actually, before he was webbing people up. So he's actually rocking both teams. He's a busy guy. He's on the Captain Britain team and then the Spider Army. He made his first appearance in Edge of Spider-Verse issue two over on Earth 833. Now, this Spider-Man is one of my favorite versions. His arc is so fun. He can hop between dimensions whenever he chooses. And then after the defeat of the Inheritors, spoilers, he keeps an eye on Earth 3145. And then during the Spider-Geddon storyline, in issue two, Spider UK dies in an explosion and it's buried in England on Earth 803, the home of Lady Spider, who loved the idea of Spider UK being buried in the same cemetery as her parents because she loved him, loved him like a brother, of course. Brother zone, even after death. He's down there like, really? Okay. That's Number seven, Spider-Man. Literally, this gets a little gross. Now imagine if Spider-Man had more spider than man when he was bit. That's what happened to Patton Parnell when he first entered comics in Edge of Spider-Verse issue four. See, Patton lived a pretty dark life. He lived with an abusive Uncle Ted. He would perform horrible experiments on animals and he spied on his neighbor, Sarah Jane. So it's not a healthy system that he's got going on here in any way, really. One day, Sarah Jane and Patton went to Alcorp Industries in hopes of freeing all these test animals, but that's when Patton saw this red 
radioactive spider. He was like, mm, I wanna touch it. And then he did, got bit, and then got kicked out. Now, overnight, he didn't get jacked. His vision didn't get better. He wasn't webbing up Dr. Peppers and lamps. When he got his abilities, he started eating everything. He ate a mouse, and then he ate a cat, and then when Uncle Ted walked in, he was like, what's up? Now, this version is, of course, extremely powerful, but he's also extremely dark. We love the balance. We love balance. Number six, Spider Cyborg. Coming from Earth 2818, this version is a dark future Spider-Man. I mean, look at him. Of course, there's some sort of future-ness going on here. He made his first debut in Superior Spider-Man issue 33. Now, it's Peter Parker if he got cybernetic additions. It's badass. That's basically all it is. His one eye can zoom in, go all tactical. The claws can certainly leave a mark. And one of the most remarkable features, um, his arm cannon, his sonic arm cannon, that's definitely a plus. Now, before Karn came to Earth 2818, our Superior Spider-Man warned him, and then when Kane finally did show up, Superior Spider-Man and some other webbed friends joined the battle. His left eye being a red lens is actually a nod to his appearance early on in the 90s in Spider-Man issue 21, titled Dealing Arms. Number five, the Scarlet Spider. Ben Riley first appeared in Amazing Spider-Man issue 149 as a clone. He was part of the whole clone thing that went on for <laughs> way too long, way too long. But it wasn't until Spider-Man issue five that he was introduced to readers as the Scarlet Spider. Now the Jackal created the clone using Peter's DNA and he was made to fight Peter of course. He's like, hey, you can't beat him, just clone him. Now the two were fighting it out in order to save Ned from a bomb. And then when the clone seemingly died, he was soon buried after. But the thing is, the Jackal injected him with something earlier so he could survive something like this. Of course! Of course. So for the next five years, he thought of himself as the useless clone that came back to life, then gave himself the name Ben Riley. So depressed. Perhaps one of the better elements to come from the clone saga was Ben Riley. One of the few things. Number four, Spider-Man 2099. Ah, yes, the not so near future. 2099 Spider-Man, AKA Miguel O'Hara is the current web slinger over there. And his outfit is one of the more memorable ones. His DNA was biologically mixed with a spider's DNA. So it's a little bit different than our spider bite scenario that we have. Now he worked at Alchemex and was pressured by the company to test genetic coding. And after Mr. Sims didn't make one of those test runs, just went horrible. Miguel was then poisoned by Tyler Stone with a fatal drug named Rapture. So Miguel ended up relying on the drug so much that he couldn't quit his job. How brutal is that? It's like every McDonald's employee. It's like, hey, you want free nuggets? Yeah. Sign in tomorrow. You're not going anywhere. So Miguel ended up relying on the drug so much that he tried to genetically fix himself and fix his body. Now, of course, this had a brighter turnout than expected, but Miguel inherited Spider-Man abilities plus telepathy. Must be nice. Number three, the Spider. Earth 15 Spider-Man, simply referred to as the Spider, comes into comics during the Exile storyline issue 12. Now he was another Cletus Cassidy, pretty much. I mean, he was a red-haired psycho who had no problem taking out innocent people. So when the Spider symbiote came along in this Earth, it merged with evil Peter, who was sentenced to not one, not two, but 67 life sentences from a jury. Okay, so he's bad. He was a big part of the Weapon X team and he had Deadpool's sense of humor too, which made him just that much more evil. Now in Exiles issue 44, he was finally stopped by Firestar when she hit him with a mega blast. He was later buried in the prison cemetery, so even after death, you're still doing that time. Number two, Miles Morales. Of course, we gotta talk about him. He made his first appearance in Ultimate Fallout issue four, just a couple of months right before the death of Peter Parker. Now this is a crazy time because Norman Osborn was just arrested and revealed as the Green Goblin. And while Miles was visiting his uncle Aaron, an enhanced spider crawled out of Aaron's bag, bit Miles, and Bob's your uncle. You know the rest. Now, we got these amazing Spider-Man abilities, but he could also camouflage himself almost fully invisible. Plus, Venom Blast will help get the job done, that's for sure. The new PlayStation Spider-Man game is way more fun with these added abilities. Makes it way better, so I had to put them on this list and talk about them. Especially if we're talking about abilities. Hold L1 and just punch someone's chest through the wall, you're like, yeah, this is great. And finally, number one, Cosmic Spider-Man, AKA Captain Universe. This Spider-Man is one of, if not the most powerful alternate version of the Web Slinger. Cosmic Spider-Man went toe to toe with Rune King Thor and came out on top. So if you're not sold now, just get out of here. Actually, don't get out of here. Watch the rest of this video. Don't even say that, Never mind. Cosmic Spider-Man is from Earth 13. He retains the powers of the Enigma Force and he first appears in Amazing Spider-Man Volume 3, Issue nine. Cosmic Spider-Man can't leave his universe or else he would lose the Enigma Force. That's why the resistance of spider heroes were based in Central Park of Earth 13. They're like, hey, no sweat, we'll come to you, no problem. We don't mind the commute. <laughs> he meets his demise only a couple issues later, sadly, when the inheritors were hunting down Spider-Man and their leader, Solus, drained the Enigma Force 
from him. But we can find more of him in What If Volume 2, Issue 31, titled What If Spider-Man Had Kept His Cosmic Powers. Number 10, 1602 Spider-Man. In part one of this list, we mentioned Spider-Man 2099. So for part two, we had to wind it back a little bit. Peter Parqua, fancy name, first appeared in Marvel 1602 issue one, but it wasn't until a couple years later in New World issue four where he was introduced as the Spider. Peter Parqua didn't have any powers per se, but he still got the job done for Fury. <clears throat> Sorry, Royal Spy Master Nicholas Fury, that is. <laughs> now, I love this version of Pete quite a bit because there's these odd looking spiders that you're expecting that are going to bite him, then he's gonna turn to the webhead, but it just doesn't happen. It gets so close, and then he's like, yeah, I'm a normal guy. It's great, it teases you, so fun. So this Spider-Man is, yes, of course, a little bit weaker than our 616 webhead, but I'll give him bonus points because of the ruffles. And also, no goggles either. This dude's eyes must be so dry. Number nine, Spider-Man Noir. Bumping the clocks ahead to the year 1933, the Great Depression doesn't seem like an appropriate time to do backflips and webbing people up, but the 2008 four-part miniseries finds one of the coolest versions of Peter Parker for sure. Nicolas Cage voiced this version of Spidey in Sony's Spider-Verse film, and I gotta say, they kind of nailed it. His origins are more or less the same. Norman Osborn is a shady mayor this time around, and the way Spider-Man fights crime is so extra, I gotta admit. When I read Noir, I always read Spider-Man Spider-Man's voice in the same voice as like Jackie Earl Haley's Rorschach. I don't know, it's so fitting and smoky. It's definitely a vibe, that's for sure. And before we continue on with this list, if you wanna go ahead and give us a thumbs up, that would be extremely helpful for our channel. You're the best, thank you so much for your support. Let's get right back to this list, shall we? Number eight. Arachnite. Coming at you live from Warp World, one of the most out there versions of Peter Parker hit the page in Infinity Wars issue three. Moon Knight and Spider-Man are gearing up. They're making a game plan to take down Gamora. And Spider-Man says, just punch whoever I punch in a second. Awesome, great deal. Now that turns out to be a lot harder than imagined when the both of them merge together. Alongside Arachnite, we got to meet Ghost Panther, Soldier Supreme, Iron Hammer, and more. Now Peter's mind was also separated into four different personalities like Moon Knight, each desiring dominance of his body. So there's Science Pete, the Knight, of course, the friendly neighborhood arachnid, and for when it comes to signing those checks, CEO Peter. A combination of darts and webs ought to get the job done as well. Number seven, Spider Kid. Making his first appearance in Spider Force issue one, Earth 218 Peter's childhood is actually a little darker, believe it or not. Both of his parents passed away in a car crash tragically, and Uncle Ben was much more different after that. He was a mean old man. He was abusive to Peter, so much so that Peter actually scratched the family name. He started going by Charlie Parker. Charlie was a troubled kid naturally. It wasn't his fault at all, but he had to spend two years at the Administration for Child Services and then two more years at Horizon Juvenile Detention Center. Now his powers didn't arrive until he was 13 after that. And then he had to bust dealers just to get by. Charlie was recruited into the Superior Spider Army by Ashley Barton, who would call Charlie Grandpa because of the resemblance of her grandfather Pete from her reality. I love Grandpa Pete's style. The exposed arms, gotta admit, Pretty badass. Number six, spiders, man. And now onto something a little more, um, I don't know, disgusting, perhaps? Spider Man of Earth 11580 is actually Spider's man. He's made of a thousand spiders that work together. Hive mind status. So, so gross. See, before the incident, Peter and Gwen were visiting Horizon Labs, and instead of one spider coming down, taking a bite of Peter, he actually fell into a pit of radioactive spiders where they consumed him. But he didn't go. See, his consciousness was actually spread out within all of these thousands of spiders. So much worse, way worse, I would say. Even on the cover of spider Get in issue three, it grosses me out. You see all of them and they're great, all the different alternate Spider-Mans, and then you see him and his mask is ripped, there's spiders coming out, like no, I don't want your help. I want anybody's help but you, go away. He's actually quite similar to Carl King, who came around in comics much earlier with Spider-Man's Tangled Web issue one. Only he was a bully in Peter's class who was obsessed with getting the same powers as Spider-Man, so he ate the dead spider that initially bit Peter and then ended up in a similar conundrum. I'd rather eat the spider than be consumed by thousands of them. Everybody's turning into spiders, like it's a fun thing. That's a hard pass. I'd rather just not have superpowers. Number five, Astro Spider. 
Jumping on over to Earth 3145, making his first appearance in Spider Force issue one, John Jameson was the son of Jonah Jameson. He was an astronaut for NASA, and during one trip, a spider got trapped in his suit, which already sounds like a nightmare scenario. But when the space shuttle was then hit by cosmic waves, John obtained these amazing new abilities that all merged together. Now, he didn't come home and stop bank robbers one quip at a time. See, his Earth was actually destroyed by a thermonuclear war, so Jameson was assigned to oversee the construction of a spacecraft on the Nautilus platform. He, along with 35 others, are the last of humanity. So it's a little bit different than our, you know, usual Earth 616 scenario. John can also read minds and create webs of solid telekinetic energy. He met his fate a few issues later when he was feasted on by Verna. Sometimes being a spider totem sucks. Number four, the savage Spider-Man. Less space and more savage land. This Peter Parker entered comics in Vault of Spiders issue one. When a plane went down over Antarctica, Peter was the only survivor in his family. Now he didn't have powers just yet, but he survived using the only remaining parachute. Tragic stuff. Now during his rough emergency landing, the wind led him to touch down in a nest of giant spiders. And then they all just bid him nonstop until he himself gained these spider abilities. And then soon he was the new protector of Savage Land. Now later on, he was recruited into the spider army by Ghost Spider to fight off the inheritors back on our Earth 616. Number three, Hostess Cake Spider-Man. I think it's time we talk about one of the craziest versions of the webhead and perhaps one of the yummiest, I'll say. Besides Spiders Man, it's pretty yummy too. So not only is Peter dishing out quips and flips, but he's also feeding the world. This version appeared for the first time in an ad for Hostess Twinkies, so naturally its own Marvel Universe had to exist to house such a reality. And also, it's fun to talk about. So when it came down to taking on these supervillains, Spider-Man wouldn't resort to violence to get the message across. Instead, he would just huck Twinkies. He would huck fruit pies, chocolate cakes, all the treats, just Coming at ya. It's so yummy. And funny enough, in Spider-Verse issue one, the cakes are referred to as golden sponge cakes, you know, to avoid trademark issues, then they get sued. That's also the same issue where we see the end of said golden sponge cake spidey. Short but sweet. Number two, Superior Spider-Man. Starting in 2013, this version is the outcome of the Dying Wish storyline, where Dr. Octavius planted his mind inside Peter Parker's. That's right, the two ended up switching bodies, like it's Freaky Friday, only with super abilities. That's always fun. Otto Octavius was dying and when Peter visited, he had no idea it's actually his own deathbed that he was looking at. Let me explain. So right when Otto Octavius switched into Peter's body, he discovered what it was really like to be a hero. He understood the whole with great power comes great responsibility thing. Having retained Peter's memories as well in this new skin suit, he decides to just go for it and fight crime, but he does it in a horrible way. He's not really sure how to balance the scales of justice just yet. He was violent when it came to handling these guys. Otto even enlarged the suit's talons to cause greater pain to his victims. Like, is he Jigsaw? Who does this? He modified the nano spider tracers as well that get ejected from said talons to paralyze the victims. Green Goblin and his army attacked, and then it was then that Otto Octavius realized he wasn't meant to be the sticky hero that he wanted to be. After coming to terms with the fact that Peter's consciousness still exists inside of him, he decided to sacrifice himself, allowing Peter to become the superior Spider-Man. Number one, Spider-Boy. Another fun amalgam making his first debut in Marvel vs. DC issue three, residing on Earth 9602, Spider-Man mixed with DC Superboy. I mean, I smell power. Need I say more, really? Spider-Boy is a clone. Now he's a clone of Peter who was created during an accidental lab explosion. Now General Ross felt responsible, so he adopted the young clone, Pete Ross and Uncle Jen. They were a fun pair until Thaddeus was taken out by a mugger, sad stuff. So Pete now became the hero. He put together a suit, became famous almost overnight. Now back when he returned to Project Cadmus, Pete was given a web pistol to help him swing around. And on top of that, he can increase his own personal gravity to help get things done. He can focus gravity inwards to make himself stronger and move faster, or he could lower gravity around himself in order to jump higher and further. Number 10, Ezekiel Sims. Ezekiel Sims is also referred to as Old Man Spider-Man. In his reality, he was the one to take up the Spider-Man mantle after Peter Parker was killed by Moreland. Ezekiel hails from Earth 4 and is an alternate reality version of the 616 Ezekiel Sims. The Ezekiel Sims of Earth 616 was the one who locked away Cindy Moon, aka Silk, in order to protect her from Moreland. Moreland, his enemy, who he knew was tracking Cindy. Old Man Spider-Man Ezekiel Sims made his first appearance in the Edge of the Spider-Verse series in issue number 
5. He also happens to have a really cool looking suit. He was created by Gerard Way and Jake Wyatt. Number 9, Spider Woman. Spider Woman is Jessica Drew, or at least she is one of the Spider Women. More importantly, she is the one that we'll be talking about for this point on this list. Jessica Drew is more removed from the world of Peter Parker Spider Man, having her own unique origin story that doesn't mimic the tried and true spider bite, loss of Uncle Ben. With great power comes great responsibility, yada yada yada. Instead, Jessica Drew was experimented on by her father and the High Evolutionary, likely in disguise. Possibly in disguise. Jessica spent much of her early years in stasis, and when she awoke, she was a fully grown young adult. Jessica ended up in the hands of Hydra, but would eventually break away from her more villainous origins and end up as the hero that we've come to know as Spider Woman, who has also had a career as a successful sleuth in PI. Jessica Drew made her first appearance in Marvel Spotlight issue number 32 back in the 70s and was created by Archie Goodwin, Sal Buscema, Jim Mooney, and Marie Severin. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are as excited for Across the Spider Verse Part 1 as we are and you want more lists about it, be sure to let us know by giving this video a thumbs up because I want to tell you more about what I want for this movie and what I want for all of us. Number 8, Lady Spider. Lady Spider is an alternate I'm particularly fond of. I just love her overall design and the fact that she is from the turn of the century. Lady Spider is Maybelle Riley. Her father was an inventor and inspired May to become an inventor herself and ultimately a hero. She used parts he had in his garage after he passed away to build her own spider suit and her own web shooters and four mechanical arms, which also granted her the ability to wall crawl. While Maybelle doesn't have any superpowers, she is considered to be quite intelligent and resourceful. And honestly, she doesn't need powers to be a cool inventor Spidey alternate. After all, inventing is a hugely important skill of Spider-Man's too that often gets overlooked or forgotten. Lady Spider first appeared in Spider-Verse issue number one and was created by Robbie Thompson and Dennis Madrid. Number seven, Spider-Girl. For this Spider-Girl, we're talking about Anya Corazon. She is an alternate spider folk from Earth 616. Anya herself is another spider totem who gets her powers from a more mystical source known as the Spider. Spider Society, where she was granted a spider tattoo that basically gave her spider-like powers. At least, that's how it seemed initially. Or you could look at it like she got spider-like powers and then she got the tattoo from those. In truth, the Spider Society had only unlocked Anya's true potential though, allowing her to tap into and access her natural powers, which were simply lying dormant. Now, however, Anya no longer possesses these same powers, instead having powers that mimic Spider-Man following the events of Spider Island. Anya, or Aranya as she is also referred to, made her first appearance in the 2000 2004 Amazing Fantasy series in issue number one. She was created by Fiona Avery and Mark Brooks. Number six, Spider Man 2099. Of course, one we all expect to see based on their appearance in the promotional material and the post credits scene. However, that doesn't mean that fans everywhere aren't hyped and, of course, wanting this to happen. And if you're one of those folks, congrats, because it's definitely going to be a thing. Miguel O'Hara is Spider Man 2099. He first made his appearance in Amazing Spider Man issue 365, where a preview was featured for the Spider Man 2099 series. He is from the alternate future year of 2099 from the alternate Earth of 928. Here Miguel became Spider-Man after trying out his own experimental and dangerous procedure. Despite the procedure being tampered with, it surprisingly worked and Miguel received his spider-like powers and abilities, making him the Spider-Man of the future. Number 5, Spider-Punk. One of my favorite alternate Spideys out there has always been Hobbert Brown. Brown is the Spider-Man of Earth 138. He made his first appearance in The Amazing Spider-Man Spider-Verse story in issue number 10 of the 2014 ASM series. Series. Hobby was created by Dan Slott and Olivier Capoyle and is known for his punk rock attitude. He fights his universe's version of Venom, V E N O M, with an army of amps. Hobby Brown is also another version of 616 Hobby Brown, who currently goes by the code name Hornet and works as a hero. But originally, this Hobby from Earth 616 was the first version of the short lived villain Prowler, making his first appearance in the comics back in the late 60s. I know, now when we think Prowler, we all think Aaron Davis, but actually, actually, Hobby Brown, original. Prowler. Number 4, Spider-Man. Spider-Man is another awesome alternate of Spider-Man and of Aunt May. She first made her appearance in the original What If series in issue number 23, where we answered the question, what if Aunt May had been bitten by that radioactive spider instead? This all happens as a result of Peter leaving his lunch at home on the day when he attended the science demonstration with his class. Aunt May was the one who ran into the radioactive spider and was bit by it. Initially, Aunt May intended to use her powers to perform stunts in order to earn money to support her family. However, the villain leaped Frog showed up, prompting May to fight against him and defeat him, turning her into a hero from that point on. Spider Man was created by Steve Skeets and Alan Kupperberg. Since appearing in What If, she's made several other appearances throughout the Spidey comics and Marvel multiverse. Spider Man hails from the alternate reality of Earth 3123, and in that reality, Uncle Ben's still alive. Number three, Spider Man India, or just Spider Man as he's known in his own reality. Pavita Prabhakar is Spider.
Spider-Man in the reality of 50101. Pavatir grew up poor in India, but due to his brilliant mind, wins a scholarship and is able to move to Mumbai with his aunt Maya and Uncle Bim. While there, he receives spider-like powers from a yogi who hopes Pavatir will use them to save the world from an ancient evil that threatens it. Pavatir loses his uncle Bim as a result of him not choosing to use his powers to help a woman who is being attacked. His uncle does try to help and dies in the process. Pavatir first appeared in Spider-Man India in issue number one and was created by Jeevan Kang, Suresh Sitharman, and Sharud Devarajan. Number two, Spider-Man Noir. While we did get to see Spider-Man Noir in the first film, Into the Spider-Verse, where he was voiced by Nicolas Cage, I think that's just all the more reason that fans would love to see him return in this follow-up film. Nicolas Cage was the perfect casting for Spider-Man Noir, which made him an instant fan favorite among those who were introduced to the Spider-Verse via the film. In the comics, Spider-Man Noir is also considered a popular character. He hails from the Noir-verse of Earth 90214. Spider-Man Noir made his first appearance in the comics in Spider-Man Noir issue number one and was created by David Hine and Marco Jurjevic. Number one, Spider-Woman. May Parker may be more well known by her former mantle of Spider-Girl, but she is currently all grown up and known as Spider-Woman in the comics. She is the daughter of Peter Parker and Mary Jane Watson Parker from the reality of MC2. In this alternate universe, heroes were more prone to retiring, settling down, and having families. As such, Peter, in this reality, ends up having a daughter and a son with MJ. May, Mayday Parker, it turns out, and her brother both end up developing spider-like powers and eventually May would become Spider-Girl and later Spider-Woman, following in her dad's footsteps. I think it would be especially cool to see this alternate from Earth 982 alongside another Spider-Man who is only just having kids or, you know, hasn't had them yet. Could be like fun and kinda awkward. May is a fan favorite, so this is one that I think a lot of us are hoping to see in the next film, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse Part 1.